Hello, Spark fans. Welcome back to Advancing Spark, where today we're going to be straddling the line between Power BI and the Lake House with the changes that have recently gone into the Databricks connector for Power BI. So essentially, you can now do native queries. You can write your own bit of SQL and throw it in as if it was a table and then use that inside your Power BI models. But is that a good thing? Does that actually work? Should you be using it? There's loads of questions around what we have to do with it. How does it work? Should you actually be using this in anger? in your Power BI models. Now, as you may have noticed when I've been doing various different Power BI demonstrations in the past, I'm not a Power BI expert. I've had abuse from the Power BI cat team about my fairly shoddy setup inside Power BI desktop. And that's fine, I admit that, that's okay. So in a minute, I'll be introducing a new guest that we got for today, who's gonna be helping us as our Power BI guru. Now, as with previous videos, we're still actually sort of saying, if you're interested in learning Spark, then do check out our Spark Fundamentals training. You've got that link down below, that Spark fans discount. Give you 10% off if you want to have a go. And as always, if you're new around it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, everything we'll go through today, we'll pop some links down in the description to go and check it out for yourself. But without further ado, I need to introduce Johnny, our resident Power BI guru. Hey, Johnny. Hello. Hi, Simon. How's it going? Thanks for having me on. That's quite all right. Welcome. Joining us. Again, kind of, you know, neon sign brethren. <laughs> oh, yes. Cool. So, well, what are we talking about? Why why, why do we care? Okay, so uh, recently Databricks have released some new functionality as part of their Power BI connector, the ability to do uh, native queries in SQL. So, what even is that? Um, if you've been using the Power BI connector for things like SQL Server, this has been there since pretty much day one. Uh, but when it came to the connector uh, for Databricks, uh, you couldn't, there was no capability to do native queries. So probably the easiest thing to do is show you what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So I'm going to switch over. We'll see your screen. Let's get this up. There we go. Okay, so this is an old version of Power BI Desktop, and this is using the old Azure Databricks connector. So you give it your um, Databricks uh, connection details. Hit OK. This would take you to a little wizard that will show you the available uh, catalogs for you. I've probably have to excuse whilst this cluster spins up. It's a serverless cluster, so it should be a matter of minutes, though. Seconds even, let's say. Very cool. I'm with you so far. So far, this is my level of demo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got the catalogs available to us here. We're using Unity Catalog, and we've got a demo data catalog here. And inside, we've got a uh, curated schema and fragment's sake, let's pick up our factor sales table. Okay. So that, that was effectively, that was the experience for importing data into Power BI um, with the old uh, Databricks connector. Okay. Now, we've got a new connector. Slightly different experience. So, main difference is this. Got a box down here where you can write yourself some custom SQL. So, I have already prepared Blue Peter Styley, a SQL query here. As you can see from the dialog box, you do have to give it the default catalog. So, yeah. even though this is an optional in the connector, you can uh, you you have to use it here. So, uh, what we've got it demo data, I believe it was called. Yeah, okay. And we're away. So cool. that's effectively the difference. Uh, it's between being able to um, import just using the uh, Power Query UI versus creating your own custom SQL. Um, but is it a good idea? What do we think? So I had mixed feelings when I saw this announcement because for a long, long time, the use of nat native queries in Power BI was kind of considered not to be best practice. And the reason for that is because uh, native queries don't, by default, support query folding. Mm -hmm. Now, for those people who aren't uh, Power BI fans, query folding is this idea of passing back all of the um, all of the calculation and all of the manipulation to the source uh, database. So rather than loading all of that data into memory and performing uh, the transformations um, via Power BI, you actually push that down, and the Databricks engine would be uh, taking care of it. Now, I mean, on you... that point, it's a it's a similar way to how the Spark engine works. 
So the Spark Engine does that if you're connecting to a JDBC endpoint. It'll do, essentially, they don't call it query folding, they call it a predicate pushdown. But it will do things like send parts of the query over. It'll decide before a stage it's going to do the filtering and aggregations and all that stuff, even when you're reading Spark. Okay. So from, for Sparky people, this should be fairly familiar. Um, and it's important, right? If you take away that ability, things get really slow. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, as an example here, if I look at the... Uh, a look at the, the table that we're querying here. So we're talking uh, nine and a half, pushing 10 million records, data running uh, from the beginning of 2021 up until uh, yesterday. Now, in theory, if I decided that for my analysts and for my Power BI users, they don't need the full data set. They're only really bothered about the here and now. And maybe I just want to provide for them um, this year's data, year-to-date data. So what I could do if I go back to the original, so this is the old uh, version of uh, the connector, and I can easily grab on my date. Let's put in a date filter. Oops. Whoa. For this year. And that's going to filter down my data, and I can load that then into my model. And when I load it, you'll see a little counter of how many records are being loaded at this point. So I know for a fact when this gets going that for this year's data, it gets to around about half a million rows. There we go. So we've got to about 5 to 22 and then it stops. And if I look in here and look at the queries that have run, there's a little bit of noise because I've been loading things up in, in terms of um, navigating in Power Query itself. Well, if I take the most recent one and look at what's going on here, it's passed down that um, that filter uh, predicate. It said, right, okay, okay, yep, I can see you've applied that filter for this year's data, and there we go. It's put a, a limiter in for the date there in between those two dates. So I spun up the same example using the new connector. Um, so let's do exactly the same thing. Now, my expectation at this point is that what's going to happen, because I'm using a native query, it's going to return all nine and a half million rows, bring all of that into Power BI, and then do the filtering after the event, which is going to be a lot less efficient. So I mean, let's certainly, have a look. if we're talking about delta tables, right? Then the whole way the delta tables work and go fast and things is by file pruning. And if Databricks isn't seeing that query, not going to do any file pruning. It's going to read the entire thing. So if you've done a load of really good work on your delta table and you've got partitions, you've Z-ordered it, you've done a load of optimizations, you've got some Bloom filter indexes, you've done everything you possibly can to make that table fast. And then if you don't query fold here, you're just going to read the entire thing and you're negating the whole point of making Delta fast. So yeah, not good. If it doesn't query no. fold, it's going to go slow. 100%. So let's basically apply that query here. And as I say, I'm expecting the, the counter now to, once it's connected and start bringing data down, that's going to count up and past 100, 000, 200, and it's going to go past that. It didn't. It got to 500,000 and it stopped again, which I found unusual. It's not what I was expecting. So if I go back here and look at my new most recent query, and we see this. Now, it is slightly janky SQL. This isn't the SQL I would write. It's basically sub sub queries the initial query um yep. but then still applies that that predicate at the end so it but it is folding now as a power bi veteran as i say this is strange um by default historically native query hasn't really supported um query folding by default now chris webb did a blog um a couple of years ago now there is a way you can get around uh, query folding for native queries. And effectively what you have to do, you have to write that native query, then you need to go back to Power Query afterwards, go into the advanced editor, start hacking it about and, and putting in some some special little parameters that are gonna allow mm. that, uh, that query folding. So I had a look to see what had gone on inside of our, our new Databricks query. And what you find, if you load up the advanced editor and stick a little bit of formatting in this. It's 
the line we're interested in. So by default, it does it already. That enable folding true by default is enabled in this new Databricks connector. Cool. So I guess my previous advice that would be you want to avoid native queries because they they break query folding mm -hmm. isn't strictly speaking true by default with this Databricks connector. Cool. So from a, oh, this is bad practice, avoid it because it's going to tank your speed. That's no longer true. So now it's just a case of, do you want people to do this from a data modeling, from a governance, from a looking after things point of view, rather than a pure, it's going to go slow. If it's going to go really slow, cool. It's bad practice, let's not do it. Should you be creating a model that has some custom SQL and some objects? I mean, that's the, uh, the million dollar question, I guess. My view, my opinion, as a guy that has opinions, I still don't think you should. I personally, so if you've invested in a Databricks instance, I personally prefer to see any kind of transformations on your data happening upstream in Databricks. So it's the classic Matthew Roach, uh, Roach's maxim of data transformation, transform your data as far upstream as possible. Um, so I think really, I'd still probably avoid using native queries. I'd still want to see that transformation done upstream in, uh, in Databricks. Yeah, makes sense. So whether you could just create it as view objects in your kind of, you know, curated gold layer, if you like, or materialize it if there's a lot of work done there. There's various things you could do inside Databricks to actually sort of create this thing. Uh, any any scenarios when you wouldn't, when you'd end up using this? Possibly. I mean, suppose you're in a scenario where you as the analyst, uh, you're relying on the data engineer to do that to do that curation for you. So you've got your your data's in the silver layer or the uh, the base layer. Um, it's it's been cleaned, but it hasn't yet been modelled. So you could use this as a way to to get around that, rather than actually waiting for that um, curation to happen into that gold layer. You could bypass it potentially. I think mm -hmm. there's a risk there in terms of incurring some technical debt. You'd still yeah. probably want to go back uh, afterwards and change that up. Um, but it could be a way to to get around that, or perhaps even a way of doing a rapid prototype and a bit of experimentation. So maybe ahead of that um, curated entity being uh, done by that data engineering team, gives the analyst the opportunity to uh, see how that might plug into a Power BI data model up front. Yeah, I mean, it's for me, I mean, that, that argument entirely makes sense. You know, if we talk, so use the medallion architecture with the example of bronze, silver, and gold. Um, you know, if, we, if we're just starting a, a project with a client and we've got a load of data when we've cleaned it, but we haven't yet decided what the data model is. We're trying to figure out that. We're running kind of data modeling sessions with a client, but we have some analysts trying to do some, yeah, absolutely rapid prototyping right at the very start. If they do that on top of the silver layer and they have to use Power Query to shape the data and get it into state, the technical debt of taking that and transferring it back into something that we can actually sort of use as transformation logic inside um, inside of Spark, it's, it's pulling it apart. It's having to basically it's just completely rekey it based on what it was. If they can do that rapid prototyping using native queries here and essentially build out a virtual data model inside Power BI, and then we just take those query objects and use that to create our gold layer, essentially they're doing the rapid prototyping in the same language we'd use to do the transformation. So that that could be a quite neat improvement to how we do rapid prototyping. Yeah, it's, a, it's an option. I think for me, the good thing about this feature being introduced it provides flexibility. Yeah. I probably quite often have my happy path hat on, and I still would say that in a perfect world, I'd like to see this curated before it goes into Power BI. But yeah, obviously that's me being an idealist, and that's not necessarily how the real world works. So having the option and the ability to do this is still definitely valuable. Yeah. I think there's the the other thing on my side is security. So if you had a, a very a very locked down like gold layer. And you're being, you know, there's a big process about validation and kind of you know sign off and management of what goes into that gold layer. Um, and your users that you're trying to, you know, democratize BI, you're trying to get various different people able to actually, you know, quickly analyze data. Um, and if they can't, if they don't have the permissions to create objects, and they don't have time to, you know, kind of put things through, I think just allowing people to extend and augment on top of a curated gold layer, there's still value there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's 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 there as an option. Um, I'm still 
curate your objects properly and make them available. But yeah, hundred percent. You know, real world scenarios that's not always possible. And again, that that speaks to Max, uh, Roche's maxim. You know, he says transform your data as far upstream as possible, or as downstream as necessary. And perhaps this is the you know the ways of enacting that necessary where you don't have um, that that the access possible to do it further upstream. Yeah. Cool. All right, makes sense. Cool. Well. Thanks for joining us on the show, and, and hopefully I'll drag you on further in the future when we've got things that are the intersection of Power BI and Lake Houses and Databricks and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. No worries, thanks for having me. Alrighty. So yeah, the connector's now out. You can go and give it a try. Uh, I'm going to drop a link to the blog post that kind of talks about it and announces it and goes through all the details that are in there. But yeah, you can go ahead, give it a try, start building out your data models with some native query elements there. If you decide it's a good idea and if it fits with your current data modeling strategy and you can't actually put it back into the gold layer where it belongs, but you can at least do it and it's going to perform properly. So once again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new around here and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.